When you walk through this cathedral, it does something to you. You will have a love for this ancient forest that carries through your life. Walking here, I am at peace. But never far from my mind is what could happen. It's hard to imagine that these giant trees could disappear. Cook Forest State Park is named after the Cook family. John Cook came here in 1826 to look at a water transport route for lumber to Pittsburgh. A couple of years later, he brought his family back and they started a timber operation that ran for the next 75 years. The family then had a big decision to make to harvest the remaining old trees, or save them. They decided to save them. The Cook Forest Association was formed and raised the money needed to buy the land from the lumber company. Cook Forest became a state park in 1927. It was the first Pennsylvania state park acquired to preserve a natural area. Some of these trees have stood for hundreds of years growing here long before the founding of the United States. Generations of people have walked beneath their branches and marveled at their size. Cook Forest State Park is 8,500 acres of fairy tale landscape. Its 315 acres of Old Growth Cathedral are a registered National Natural Landmark. Huge trees, mossy logs, cool streams, amazing animals. The older forests are so important for so many reasons. They're important to humans, I think as a spiritual and aesthetic touchstone, so we can see and understand what our planet does on its own when we don't interfere. Cook Forest is full of exemplary trees and a variety of species. Many of the hemlocks and white pines are over 300 years old. 18 different species are over 150 years old. And a dozen species are over 200 years old. Cook Forest is considered the best place to go in the eastern United States to see big old hemlock trees. In 2013, everything changed. It was discovered that the ancient hemlocks of Cook Forest were under attack. A tiny insect, the hemlock woolly adelgid, also called HWA, has already killed many of the hemlock trees in the eastern United States. In Great Smoky Mountains National Park, 800 acres of hemlocks are affected. 95% of hemlock trees are gone from Shenandoah National Park in Virginia. What happened in those places could happen in Cook Forest. When I walk through this forest, I think about what that would mean.
My name is Ryan Bortz. I'm the Park Operations Manager here at Cook Forest and Clear Creek State Park Complex. We have one of the most significant stands of old growth forest in the eastern United States. Uh, and the park is the first park that was set aside for the preservation of, of a natural resource landmark. Hemlock woolly adelgid was accidentally introduced to North America from Asia and was first found in the eastern United States near Richmond, Virginia in the early 1950s. The small aphid-like insect has spread to 18 eastern states since then, and it was discovered in Pennsylvania in 1967. HWA here in Cook Forest was discovered by our park naturalist, Dale Luthringer. He found it near the Clarion River in late March of 2013. HWA lays its eggs on the underside of hemlock needles. The white, waxy egg coatings resemble a tiny tuft of wool. When they hatch, the insects feed on new growth by inserting their piercing mouth parts into the tree's needles, draining the life out by using nutrients the tree needs. Here at Cook Forest State Park, uh, we've been fortunate enough to have the Pennsylvania Bureau of Forestry uh, step up and take a real lead role in helping us to combat the, the hemlock woolly adelgid. And I mean, it, when, when we found out that we had the, the infestation initially, you know, I'll admit it was, it was a scary scenario, uh, but we feel well supported at this point. And we're fortunate to have uh, competent, knowledgeable people, people with extensive forestry backgrounds to, to assist the park with, with this project. We don't know for sure how many trees have been affected by HWA, but our approach to treatment has to be to treat as if they all have it. In healthy trees, it can take up to several months for the insecticide to be transported to where the adelgid feeds. In damaged trees, it can take longer because they have more difficulty transporting the insecticide. So for this particular area, we're only treating trees that are 30 inches and greater this year. Next year we'll come in and we'll do a lower uh, diameter class and we'll keep working our way down until we cover everything. We can't treat it all at once because of the label restrictions on the chemicals. So we start with the biggest, the oldest trees and work our way down from there. Here in uh, Cook Forest, this is probably about as ideal of a place for a hemlock to grow as, as you can get. So. These trees are happy. They will probably resist it a little bit until the, the levels of the insect get up pretty high and then it'll, it'll probably move through if we weren't treating the trees. The good news about all of that is that in, for, in, in most cases, it will take a few years to kill a tree and there is time to come in and treat it um, either with pesticides or, uh, uh, or non-toxic soaps and oils and things like that. But um, so you have time to, to help a tree before it declines. Another type of treatment that is very effective are, is imidacloprid, which is a neonicotinoid insecticide. It comes in a variety of different formulations. Um, most of those are buried or in, injected around the base of the tree, then the, the tree uh, sucks the pesticide up through the roots and then it moves up through the trunk of the tree to the feeding sites and where the insect feeds. Um, the nice thing about that is that it, it can last a very long time. Uh, also, hemlock trees don't, uh, they don't have flowers, so some of the controversies with these insecticides uh, affecting bees are, are a non-issue because hemlocks are wind-pollinated trees, so there's no chance of bees being affected on the hemlock tree itself. Hemlock woolly adelgid doesn't have any native predators in the eastern United States. 
Very cold winters provide some hope and the most natural way of controlling it. The insect cannot survive prolonged or bitter cold. But with a change in climate, cold winters may become fewer and farther between. Could these ancient trees be entering the winter of their lives? In Cook Forest State Park, we're using several methods to fight the HWA infestation. Laracobius nigrinus is a beetle from the Pacific Northwest that preys on HWA. It's used as a biological control here and released into infested trees. The beetle will lay its eggs on top of the adelgid larva, and when the beetle hatches, it'll feed on the adelgid. The predatory beetles initially disperse slowly up the release tree and then away from it about 40 meters per year. HWA is around and uh, it, it is a serious issue. HWA, hem hemlock woolly adelgid, uh, these infestations, you're really seeing it on a large scale. It's pretty impressive to think about, you know, how something as small as that can, can overtake something that's so much bigger than it and just destroy it. It's really, it's, it's, it's scary on one side because, you know, you want to preserve these trees. I mean, the hemlock, it, you know, it's the state tree. So it's, and not only that, but what it does for the ecosystem, it's, it's really a strong link on many different levels. I do know that there is a lot of things that are being done as far as wide scale treatment goes, but you know, you have to remember this isn't an easy thing. This, this costs thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and countless, countless uh, amount of man hours and the labor behind it. I, I think that it's one of those things that, you know, we'll see how passionate people are about it. Volunteers are needed to assist with surveys and we conduct periodic training days. People can help with trail maintenance and monitoring, letting the park staff know where they found HWA so we can go back later and survey further. Donations to help cover the cost of treatment are also needed. We want people to remain engaged and informed because this will be a long and costly battle. But without the public's help and interest, the trees could be lost forever. We have lost a few trees to hemlock woolly delgid, uh, but we were able to start treatment very soon after we found it, which has greatly limited uh, the amount of trees that have died so far here at Cook Forest State Park. Well, hemlock trees are important for a variety of reasons. Uh, lots of things depend on the hemlock. Um, we can hear some birds calling around us. There's various species of birds uh, that really depend upon hemlock trees for a lot of their life cycle. Uh, some species, uh, one, one in particular, the black-throated green warbler, some studies have suggested they're actually even obligate to hemlock stands. And um, there's other birds that uh, live here at Cook Forest in the old growth that prefer to live in these old hemlock stands. They'll live in the younger stands um, and other forest types, but uh, there are some studies that have documented uh, magnolia warbler 
to be found 45 times more often in the, uh, the old growth hemlock. Uh, black burning warbler 40 times as often. Uh, Swainson's thrush, which is a threatened bird species we have here at Cook Forest, uh, three and a half times. Several woodpecker species, woodpeckers 20 times more often. So the birds alone um, really depend, certain species really depend upon these hemlock trees. Also, the sheltering ability of the hemlocks is very important for the streams in regards that it keeps the streams uh, cold. Uh, colder water can actually uh, hold more dissolved oxygen, which is the oxygen that the fish breathe. And uh, the macroinvertebrates, the bugs that are in the water breathe. And if you can hold more oxygen in the water, then, you can have, then they have a, a greater uh, biodiversity of, of aquatic life that's in there as well. Uh, certain studies have shown that water that has flown from a deciduous forest into a hemlock forest has uh, decreased in temperature five to seven degrees Fahrenheit, which is incredible. And then as it runs back out through the deciduous forest, it warms back up again. So um, there's a variety of benefits when it comes to uh, the, the sheltering ability, the cooling ability of these hemlock stands in regards to streams. Uh, hemlock forests also uh, facilitate slow nitrogen cycling and they actually take up a lot of nitrogen up into the system. Uh, a lot of times the soil around in the hemlock stands is generally nutrient poor and uh, so the hemlock stands can actually hold more nitrogen and um, there has been studies where hemlock stands that have been uh, lost either from uh, uh, any variety of disturbances, a lot of that nitrogen is released into the system. And once that gets into the water, if you get a large amount of hemlocks that are, are releasing all that nitrogen at the same time, that can actually facilitate the growth of, uh, of uh, oxygen depleting uh, algae. And if you take oxygen out of the water, that's less oxygen for the aquatic life to breathe that's in the water and that can decrease the, the diversity of aquatic life that's in the stream. Uh, and when we talk about hemlocks, we have the tallest known hemlock in the Northeast, and also the, not only the largest known hemlock in Pennsylvania, but also the largest known hemlock, hemlock by volume anywhere in the Northeastern United States. That particular tree, it's actually uh, over 135 feet high, it's almost 14 feet around, and that tree actually has more board feet of wood in it compared to our largest white pine, which is over 170 feet tall. We have some very old trees here in the park. Many of our hemlock are commonly over 300 years old, as well as white pine. We've documented at least 18 different species that uh, are over 150 years old. Out of those, about a dozen are over 200 years old. Cook Forest is just an incredible place. And to be able to share that with other people is, is a great privilege. Hemlock trees are a keystone species. Many other living things depend on them and the unique dark, damp, and cool habitat they create. They anchor entire ecosystems, providing food and shelter for a great diversity of animal species, some of which are strongly dependent on hemlocks. When I walk through Cook Forest, I'm filled with gratitude that it is still here untouched. Filled with joy at witnessing these trees, hundreds of years old, towering trees, and the younger trees and other plants too. But there's also a little bit of sadness because I know that these giant hemlocks are threatened. And I stand here in the midst of these giants trying to imagine what the forest would be like without them. It would be a much different place, much different place.